So the idea here is to create a screenless music player for my toddler that he can grow with and I can add features to in the future as he develops. Max, my toddler, just turned 18 months and he really loves music. Since I'm Swedish, my wife is Ukrainian and we live in Netherlands, the player will have four languages. Swedish, Ukrainian, Russian and Dutch. Those are the languages that he regularly uses at home and at daycare. In the future, we will probably add, also add the fifth language English, but I think four languages are enough for now. The player will have a button for choosing language and four LEDs to indicate which language is selected. We'll also have buttons to skip to next track, go to previous and pause and resume. On the side, it also has a micro USB charging port and an on off button. The music player is built around the Raspberry Pi Pico. The Pico is a very powerful microcontroller and a bit of an overkill. All it does really is wait for user input, send commands to the MP3 player module and control a few LEDs. So really any microcontroller would work here. I just happen to have a few Picos laying around, which is why I choose it. The heart of the player is a small module called DF player. It consists of an MP3 player decoder, a micro SD card slot, and a built-in amplifier. It has some pins that can control it as a standalone MP3 player, but what we're interested in here is controlling it through UART, a way to send and receive data serially through two wires. By sending commands, we can tell the player what to do, for instance, play the third track in the second folder. This means we can use the Pi Pico as a brain, handling any input and sending commands to the DF player. As you can see, both the Pico and the DF player have male headers soldered to them. The DF player already came with the headers, so I only had to solder the Pico headers on. So the first step was to wire the Pico and DF player together on a solderless breadboard and write a driver for the UART commands. As you can see, wiring up the proof of concept was quite simple. Apart from power, ground, and speaker, the only thing that needs to be wired up are two wires for the UART communication. It might sound advanced to write a driver, but if you think about it, it really isn't. It's just a way to centralize and standardize the communication with a peripheral. In this case, the driver translates what we want to do, for instance, play a certain track in a certain folder, to command that the DF player understands. There are really only four short methods here. The init sets up the UART and a pin to check if the player is busy or not. Split splits a number into two separate bytes. Uh, send CMD formats and command, a command properly and sends it to the DF player. And query busy just checks if the DF player is busy playing or not. Everything else in the driver is just shorthand for the most common commands to make talking to the DF player from our code easier. You can find the code on GitHub, link is in the description. Now that everything is wired up and we have a driver, we can try it all out. By calling the shorthand methods we created from the interactive shell, we can send commands to the DF player. Since we're plugged into the computer but with uh, USB, this also powers both the Pi Pico and the DF player. We can then send the command play track 1.1 to play the first track in the first folder, pause, etc. Since this will be handled by a toddler, we need to put everything in a sturdy box. I opted for a wooden box since I think it's nicer than plastic. I am from the country of Brio wooden toys after all. So the first step was to drill holes for the speakers, button and LEDs. As you can see at this point, I have the speakers wired up and the buttons installed, but not wired up. I used a couple of the holes that I had drilled for the LEDs to run the speaker wires through. Everything else is still on the solderless breadboard for now. But as you can see, buttons are added to control the Pico and temporary uh, LEDs are connected to show which language is selected. In order to control these LEDs and turn button presses into commands for the DF player, we need some more code. Basically, this code listens to the buttons being pressed and then, depending on which button was pressed, tell the DF player what to do. 
At first, the code only stored the current track, etc. into memory, but I figured out in the early user test with my 18 month old toddler that the power button is very interesting to play with. And it's really annoying to have the same song uh, start over and over every time it's turned on. So I also added code to write the current, to the current folder and track to the Pico's flash memory when it changes and then load it back up again on start. This code is also available on GitHub. The first step is to solder sockets for the PyPico and DF player to the perf board. This makes it easier to replace them if needed. I also soldered the LEDs to a separate piece of perf board in series with resistors to limit current. I then wired everything together using wires. Yeah, I know, it's a bit messy. The LED board is uh, mounted with spacers. This is how the board with a Pico and DF player as well as a battery module will be mounted. On the front, I added some speaker grills to keep toddler fingers from ruining the speakers. Now that everything is wired together, it's time to try it out. And yeah, it works. Since I already made a hole for the power switch, I ran the wire through that hole and power it from the USB port on my computer. Talking about power, I didn't really know what would be the best way to power it, so I did some googling and opted for an all-in-one power module. It has holders for two 18650 batteries and all electronics needed for charging and powering the Pico and DF player. Anyway, this is how it looks mounted in the box. In order to have the charge port on the outside, I used a micro USB extension with a panel mount for the female part. The player has now been in use for a couple of weeks and as you can see it works fine, but there are still some things that need to be added. First I would like to add icons for the different button functions and flags for the selected language. I also think I would like to change from main loop to interrupt for the buttons and uh, putting both the Pico and DF player in deep sleep mode when for instance paused or when it's been playing for a certain time without interactions. I might also want to figure out a way to control the volume so that it's only accessible by parents. I have a couple of Pico W's laying around, so I might do that through Wi-Fi, or if they decide to enable it, Bluetooth. Please leave a comment if you have ideas for how it could be improved, and like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you wish.